to do with um and modern monetary theory, which is, you know, the predominant left-wing theory on the left, despite everyone's talking about Marxism, that's most of the people's economic theory these days. Whoa, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. You believe that? I don't believe it's true. I believe that's what most people, if you look at people's policy proposals, that's what they're proposing. You believe that most of today's non-existent left are MMT people? The Yes, because Bernie was an MMT person. I think Bernie flirted with having MNT people on his staff, but I don't. He, he never made any overt propositions based in MMT. Wasn't Stephanie Kelton part of that uh, staff? She's part of his team. So she's the one I'm talking about. Isn't she kind of the? Well, it's not just MMT that. It's also Andre Bernal. There's there was like seven of them, um, and they still and they are actually still writing policy for the squad. Also, if you actually look at what most people consider Marxism, it's underconsumptionist, which is which rhymes with MMT. It's kind of where MMT's historical origins are. Um, I say that I don't think it's true. Um, I don't you think don't it's true that most of the left are MMT is, or you don't think what MMT is. I don't think MMT is true. I don't think oh, MMT oh, is okay. actually. Well, true. I'm going to reserve my commentary, <laughs> but um, I'm going to reserve my commentary. Is that is that an after hours discussion? Do I have to table yeah. that for the after hours? For no, the I mean, listen, my position on MMT is that it's it's rooted in two simple realities: America stays the reserve currency of record for the world, and that America stays the most powerful military industrial empire on the planet. But it confuses liquidity and value in a way that fundamentally undoes Marxism. You cannot be a Marxist and an MMT. Absolutely cannot. I think that I think. It's, I think it's absolutely true on based on the fact that it's based on one state sovereignty. Yeah, right, exactly. And and anybody who like I think empirically the descriptive the descriptive part of mo modern monetary theory is true but not for the reasons they think because they think any country can do it. And I yeah. I only think imperial countries with large militaries that can enforce trade you, can do it. You, you got to have the two two factors that I just mentioned. You got to be the reserve currency currency of record, which is only the United States, particularly the petrodollar. You got to have military muscle, which is the mm -hmm. U.S. Yeah, exactly. So we're not we're not actually in disagreement. What I find concerning is a lot of the left has picked up both tacitly. I mean, the way they think spending works, and, and what we should be concerned about, like how we fund things. Um, you might hear a little bit of peons to tax the rich, but um, the the fundamental funding preposition is about like basically we can manage manage capitalist economics through central planning, mostly through spending, um, and the MMT side of that encourages spending without taxation. Taxation becomes a function only to reduce inflation in if we hit max uh, max productivity capacity, whatever they whatever they call that. Um, I, I think um, the reason why I, I kind of think we have to point this out is um, there's a reason why even the left, uh, you know, the squad or whatever, won't actually really do anything to oppose military spending if they believe in anything like MMT. Um, I think you're, you're, you're being generous in their level of intellectual sophistication. <laughs> That that's probably true, but um, uh, I would I would also I would also suspect that at least some of their advisors are thinking about this. Um, what what I think goes on in, in regards to if someone said, for example, that uh, the stimulus is not you know doesn't outstretch GDP. Well, the stimulus is not the stimulus has almost no effect on inflation in the United States. Like literally none, and and the QE and the stimulus are not remotely the same thing. The QE is, is QE here is just floating. It's basically creating what would be under the market non-liquid assets because they'd be tanked and normal conditions, and they would just be paper assets into liquidatable assets through effectively negative interest loans. All it's right, print, uh, printing is this. Printing money. It's, it's basically just printing money. Technically, it's, you know, technically there's there's loans going on, but it's printing money, but it's not just putting it in general circulation. It's putting it into the circulations, particularly in stocks. And the banks. Into the banks, right. Um, so in reality, if we want to talk about it, it's uh it it, it it's something that's good for for investors because it inflates their paper assets. 
what the reason why I disagree with MMT on what happens when 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 the Fed raises the the or why it happens when the Fed raises the um, the interest rate is what I think what the Fed does is actually when it does that it it is showing what the profitability margins in real terms really are. So why there is a depression is is kind of because the the ability to uh, use liquidity to hide value becomes harder and harder to do when you raise the interest rates. Um, but what I also find interesting is MMTers, for example, will say uh, that it, you know only inflation above like ten percent, only hyperinflation um, hurts the poor, and that the and that the rich. Are, are the people who are really pushing against inflation. And I just want to point out that like objectively speaking, in every report I read from stock market analysis, that's not true. They they actually do not want um, these inflated assets to be to be deflated by a raise of interest rates. They absolutely don't. Um, there might be certain sectors of capital do, but the financial sector does not. Well listen, raising rates after pretty much 20 years of interest rate deflation policy is going to be a nightmare. Oh, it's going to be a disaster. According to what I read before the new year, not only is the Fed planning to raise rates at, less, at least three times this year, but they're also planning to slow down QE. So that's a double whammy. Right. right? And we, we should be well, clear. Let me, let me go ahead. What, what's very important for people to understand who really are not into this aspect of un watching capitalism, which I wish the left was more focused on, is that the only thing that has been keeping this, this economy alive since 2008 is low interest rates and quantitative easing. You're completely correct. But, this is a Federal Reserve created pseudo recovery, which is not a recovery. It's literally a slow dripping bailout of financial services industries, the banks and finance capital all over. Right. And, and, and capital is terrified of, of the end of that, of the end of that, um, basically cover up and, uh, with paper assets. Um, right. What, I what I was... One more thing about MMT, mm -hmm. and this is important. I think you'll agree with me. Mm -hmm. The biggest mistake that I think MMTers make is they believe that the policies the ruling class and the Federal Reserve implemented to protect the lords of capital, i.e. quantitative easing and low rates, will be the same policies the ruling class will implement to promote Keynesianism. And I think that's ridiculous. Yeah, I think it just I think it ignores fundamental relations of production. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe on your way out. You can catch the live stream of This Is Revolution every Tuesday through Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time and Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific Time. This is Revolution.